Welcome to another match in our summer series tournament uh, for Multiplex Movie Melee. And, uh, you know, I feel like it's always said uh, before these matches, but I feel like it's even more so today. I think we have a really special match here today. We got Matthew Chen going up against Dylan Van Thine. Uh, you know, Matthew is picking up right where he left off from last season. He's staying hot. He really showed he really showed that he is a force to be reckoned with in melee. And Dylan is having a bit of himself a uh, a comeback year of a uh, winning uh winning the last one standing showing up here third round of the tournament. I think I think I think we got a special one here today. I got Andrew Barr here. Tell me something I didn't already say. <laughs> Uh, no, you kind of covered it. Um, Matthew Chen had like a fantastic year last year, and as you said, he's picking right off where he le- uh, right up where he left off. Uh, and Dylan, Dylan is having himself one hell of a season. He is a train that has kind of been rolling along. Um, two very dangerous players, two of the better players playing right now, actually, and for them to be playing at this point in the tournament kind of seems unfair. But that's the way that the uh, the dice roll sometimes. It does. Why don't we uh, start start off talking to our competitors? Well, let's bring in our 15th seat, I believe, Mr. Dylan Bantine. Dylan, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, it should be fun to reiterate a lot of the stuff I said in my uh, post match interview in my last match. I'm really excited to play uh, to play Andrew, uh, or not Andrew. You're not. I'm not playing you, Andrew. Uh, Matthew, <laughs> uh, because surprise, <laughs> people are back already. <laughs> Fuck. Is already off the rails. Uh, yeah, he's a. We're very similar players, him and I, in terms of like the strengths that we use. So whenever I face him, like I always have to think out, outside of the box. And last time we faced in teams, it was like extremely close, and I think it showed just how evenly matched we are. So it should be a good match. No doubt. Uh, let's go and bring your opponent. The uh, number seven seed in this tournament is uh, Matthew Chen, and his manager, uh, the Holes Man. Uh, guys, how you doing? Um, I'm doing great. No, I'm like, I've um, never made it this far in the tournament before. So, you know, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, Dylan is a fantastic player. Like we played in teams and that was just such a tight match. And uh, he, he's, you know, he already uh, said everything that I would probably say about us. I think this should be a really fun time. Yeah, it could not be understated that Dylan is having a season that a lot of players could only dream of right now. Like, he has been playing insane this year, uh, so we definitely did not take Dylan lightly. Uh, but like Dylan said himself, he is not playing Andrew Barr because we are going to stop him right now. All righty, then. That's the thing where you use their words against them. Take me out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know if you need to say more, but you did, and we're here. Anyway, let's just get started. I think everybody wants to get started. We're going to go with round number one, which is a basic whiteboard round. Gonna get eight questions from eight general movie categories and movie trivia. You're gonna get 15 seconds to write the answer down on your whiteboard. At the end of that time, you're gonna show and verbalize your answer. You get a point for each correct answer. And uh, you get all eight right, you're gonna receive a bonus question, also worth one point. Uh, and then you get uh, three repeats and challenge use throughout the match. Gentlemen, you ready? Yep. All righty. Let's get started with your first question in the round of the 1970s. What is the profession of the main character Tevi in Fiddler on the Roof? Uh, this is a show I've actually done twice. It's one of the only shows I've done that for. Oh, okay. Was it? I got this character in question. I got to play the clarinet player in the uh, during the wedding. Well, there's that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Start with Matthew. Uh, I'm just a teacher. Uh, Dylan? I said Milkman. Milkman is correct. Uh, Dylan taking the 1-0 lead. All right, and your next question is going to come in recent releases. Who plays billionaire Abigail Fairfax in The Lost City? If you you had a billion dollars, what would you do? I don't know. I, I think I asked that question once in grade school. I said I'd buy a bunch of washing machines. It's a really stupid idea. I don't know why I said that. Five. You're on the laundromat. Four, three, two, one. I was just un, I was uh, unimaginative. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Dylan. Sandra Bullock. 
and Matthew. Is it Daniel Radcliffe? No more perfect rounds. Is it Daniel Radcliffe? Is the correct answer. All tied up. Going into your next question in the category classics. Which classic thriller has its climax set on Mount Rushmore? So give me your Mount Rushmore of fast food. Fast food. Wait. Listen, I'm from Texas. So all four spots are just taken up by Whataburger. <laughs> Five. We don't get that where Three, I'm from. Two, one. That's a shame. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Matthew. North by Northwest. All right. And Dylan. North by Northwest. North by Northwest is correct. Moving on. Right. Your next category is going to come in comedy. SNL alum Phil Hartman and comedian Sinbad. Both co-star in what 90s comedy about a man posing as an old friend to hide from the mob? Ever done this before? Uh, last year. So, you know, one of my less crazy years. You know, mm. One of my less crazy attempts of about a friend. It was also you, so bad. You seem to live a crazy life, don't you? Five, four, three, two, one. One pens down. I mean, Bowman's done assassination attempts. So <laughs> this is true. Uh, Dylan, oh, I got nothing on that one. Uh, Matthew, I don't know if Simbad is in this. I said Ishtar. Uh, both are incorrect. Uh, we're looking for a house guest. The classic known as house guest. Moving on to your next question. Category romance. What 2010s romance film is about a woman who has stopped aging at 29 years old? Uh, I wish I could have stopped aging then. Maybe kept some of my hair. Uh, a what, few what less crow's feet. Would have been nice. Any other things you want to change? Maybe a few less pounds. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Uh, I forgot where we're at. Uh, Matthew. I said Age of Adeline. Okay, and Dylan. Age of Adeline. Edge of Adeline is correct. Next question. As we move into the decade of the 1980s, The Goonies takes place in what U.S. state? See, we both said it because this has been brought to my attention. Sometimes we got to clarify the 1900s. We can't just say 70s mm -hmm. or 80s. Like, people don't know what the hell we're talking about. Here. Like, yeah, unless we're talking about the great train robbery. Uh <laughs> I don't think 1880s is going to seem man with an accordion. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Dylan. New York. And uh, Matthew. I oh, said Massachusetts. Uh, both are incorrect. We're looking for Oregon. Oregon. And, uh, moving on to your penultimate question, the category in a uh, mystery thriller. How is Tom Cruise's character disfigured in Vanilla Sky? Uh, are you looking for a specific answer on this? I will answer. I think Vanilla Sky is a type of ice cream. Now I'm hungry. Could. Yes. And I'm not supposed to have dairy. Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Yeah, beat me. The so Dylan's first repeat. Uh, how is Tom Cruise's character disfigured in Vanilla Sky? So when you say that, do you mean like what part of him is disfigured? Or like what do you mean, Tom Cruise? That sounds like a that sounds like a Jeopardy question. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Five, for an answer, four, I mean. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Matthew. I said car accident. I don't know if that's... All right, and Dylan. Car accident. Car accident, car crash, what we're looking for. That's correct. As we head into the final question of the category, uh, I mean, of the uh, round, but the category being animated. Who voices Buddy Grimes in Beavis and Butthead Do America? a great title it kind of is it's juvenile as all hell 
but I mean, it's it's one of the all time greats. I mean, it just gets right to the point. Exactly. Five, four, three. I could do America. Pens down. <laughs> Let's go to Dylan. I just said Mike Judge. And Matthew. I just said Tom Kenny. Both are incorrect. We're looking for Bruce Willis. Bruce Willie. Yep. And uh, with that, it's our round number one. If we're all tied up, four to four. With that, uh, is that what you have? Yep, that is what I have. All right. Just got to make sure. Sometimes I'm a moron. So, with that, we're moving on to round number two. It's our wheel round, in which our competitors will get a chance to spin our wheel. And uh, where they like what they spin on the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can elect to spin again, but they must hold on to what they land on the second time. Uh, you're going to get five questions in the category you spin off worth uh, two points apiece. Or you can check down the multiple choice worth one point. Uh, there is stealing, so watch out for that. Uh, the categories on tonight's wheel are Audrey Hepburn, Animation, Neon, Directors, Music, 1980s, Romantic Comedies, Action Adventure, as well as Spinners and Opponent's Choice. Uh, since we are tied and Matthew's higher seed, he can uh, choose what he wants to do. Here's your manager. Spin mm. first or defer? We want to go second, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll defer. We will defer. All righty. All right, Dylan. This is your first spin. Aaron Early lands on, lands on romantic commies. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I'll spin again. All right. Land on this time. And you land on animation. Okay. All righty. And uh, Andrew, why don't you take his question to animation? You're muted. You're... Yeah, I am muted. Uh, so, <laughs> Dylan, you ready for your first question in the animation? Yep. Great. First question. Balto primarily takes place in what U.S. state? Fuck it, Alaska. Fuck it, Alaska is correct for two points. Using the proper name of the state. <laughs> Your next question. Nick Park and Peter Lord directed which DreamWorks animated film? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, B, Flushed Away, C, Chicken Run, or D, The Road to El Dorado. Five. A. Four. A is incorrect. Matthew Chance for the one point steal. Your options again are A, Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit, B, Flushed Away, C, Chicken Run, or D, The Road to El Dorado. Chicken Run? That is correct for one point. All right, Dylan, your next question. What is the name of Medusa's obedient henchman in The Rescuers? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Hoops, B, Snoops, C, Cores, or D, Moors. Can I get a repeat of those options, please? Absolutely. Your options again are A, Hoops, B, Snoops, C, Cores, or D, Moors. Snoops. And that is correct for one point. Your penultimate question. In When Marnie Was There, what is the name of the house that Marnie lives in? Uh, 
multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Marsh House, B, Cliff Cottage, C, Ocean Pearl, or D, Palm Manor. Yeah, I don't remember this, so I'll go Ocean Pearl. That is incorrect. Uh, Matthew, chance for the one point steal. Your options again are A, Marsh House, B, Cliff Cottage, C, Ocean Pearl, or D, Palm Manor. A? A is correct for one point. All right, and Dylan, your last question in the category. How specifically is Marvin Acme killed in Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, hit by a train, B, blown up by dynamite, C, shot by a cannon, or D, a safe dropped on him. D? D is correct for one more point. And uh, with that, Brings uh, Dylan's total up to eight. Uh, Matthew getting a couple steals up to six. Uh, is that what you have, Andrew? That is what I have. All right. I'm bringing in Cameron and the wheel. And uh, this will be Matthew's first spin. And you land on romantic comedy. So would you like to keep that or spin again? Yeah. Yeah. What are you? What are you thinking? Because it's it's one of the things you're more confident on in this wheel, especially with animation gone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's true. Yeah, I'll leave it up to you. Do you want to take it or do you want to spin for <sighs> one of the couple that we think are better? Can I see yeah. what's on the wheel again? Yes. Yep, it is. Um. Yeah, I think let's let's keep it. I'll be yeah. safe. Yep. Alrighty then. You'll be keeping it. You got us. Uh, see ya. Cameron, and I will take uh, your questions in romantic comedies. All right. Okay. All right, Matthew, your first question. What is the name of Kathleen's bookstore in You've Got Mail? Shop around the corner. That's correct for two points. Your next question. Bob Odenkirk, Lisa Kudrow, and Andy Serkis have supporting roles in what 2010s rom-com? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are a, No Strings Attached, B, Friends with Benefits, C, Long Shot, or D, Isn't It Romantic? Long Shot? Long Shot is correct for one point. Next question. What romantic comedy features a dividing line known as the Walls of Jericho? Did it happen one night? That's correct for two points. Here, next question. What country does the majority of crazy rich Asians take place in? Singapore? That's correct for two points. Final question in the category. Who directed 1979's Manhattan? Woody Allen. And that is correct for two points. Uh, that, leave a clean, clean sweep of the category. Matthew gets a score up to 15. Dylan at eight. Is that what you have, uh, Andrew? I think you're muted. 
again. <laughs> but okay, you say you're good. Moving on to round number three, which is our pick your poison round, in which uh, our competitors uh, will get a chance to uh, pick uh, their questions at uh, values of one, two, three, and four points. Uh, well, they they kind of just said it. Well, the, the categories they can pick from tonight are Emma Stone, horror, coming of age last teen, classics, Leonardo DiCaprio, musicals, romantic comedies, and sci-fi fantasy. We're going to let our competitors pick their questions right now, and uh, hopefully we come back later. All right, we're back. Uh, Betters have picked their categories. Ready to go. Uh, the way this works, we're going to go until uh, we run out of questions or until uh, one of our competitors is mathematically eliminated. Uh, Dylan is behind, which means uh, we'll start with him. Andrew, you asked him his questions around two, so I'll ask you your questions in round number three. And we'll start with your one-pointer in the category of coming of age slash teen. Your question. Who directed Boyhood? Richard Linklater. That's correct for a point. All right. We'll stick with you for your two-pointer in classics. Your question. Who directed The Philadelphia Story? Five, four. George Cukor? That is correct for two points. Okay. The, we'll stick with you for your three-pointer in horror. Your question. What is the name of the family's goat in The Witch? Black Philip. That is correct for three points. Which brings us to your four-pointer, in which you need to hit to bring it back over to Matthew. How many now repeats he... do I have? You have two. Yeah, two. Gotcha. All right. So your four-point question, sci-fi fantasy. What is the name of the android servant played by Robin Williams in Bicentennial Man? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. One. All right, that is your second repeat. Your question again. What is the name of the android servant played by Robin Williams in Bicentennial Man? Five, four, three, two, Repeat one. Repeat the question. All right. Question one more time. What is the name of the android servant played by Robin Williams in Bicentennial Man? Uh, great game, Matthew. Uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Uh, I'll just say Gordy. And your winner, Matthew Chen. Uh, the correct answer, oddly enough, was Andrew. Uh, so um, I didn't write that. I swear. <laughs> Start off with Dylan for post match interviews. Uh, Dylan, uh, you can't. You you start off at least kind of. You start off strong, round number one, uh, tied up, and then uh, you got a wheel that probably you you, you got a category that you were not probably necessarily a uh, hold up in and. Specialty of Matthew is just the way it goes sometimes, and he uh, did good in this category. But I think it wraps up what is what has been a pretty good run for you in the tournament, and uh, you still got that title shot in your back pocket. But how do you feel True. about your uh, how you did today? Uh, I f I feel all right. I mean, animation is usually good for me. Those were some tough questions. Not gonna lie, uh, not the ones I was expecting. Uh, yeah, I apologize if I seemed pissed off when Matthew's questions were at, being asked in round two. I've had a, to be honest, a pretty emotional week, so not exactly in the best mind space. 
Uh, so I apologize for that and being a little immature. But yeah, I mean, I'm happy at what I was able to do in the tournament. I In the past few months, I basically doubled the amount of wins on my record and all by way of <laughs> knockout or TKO. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I did what I set out to do in this tournament just to boost my stats before I rush into a title shot. So yeah, overall, I'm satisfied. Matthew played great. Good job to him. Uh, yeah. And I think like we already said, does end your round, uh, does end your time in the tournament. We'll probably see you again this season. I wouldn't especially be especially shot. I guess um I guess we'll probably be using that next time we see you. I guess uh I didn't that usually has come up. I don't know. I just keep talking. Of uh I think hopefully you'll be good. Let's just, <laughs> just get you out of here. I don't know what else to ask. Good job, Dylan. Thank uh, you. bring in uh your winner today. It's Matthew Chen, his manager, Cameron Holzman. Matthew, the train just keeps rolling. It just does. Uh, and uh, beat another good competitor here today in pretty sound fashion. Uh, had a good round one. You ran through your round two, got the steals, didn't have to answer a round three question. And you're going into the semifinals of the tournament. How do you feel today? Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I can't believe I, I made it this far. Honestly, um, no, Dylan's just such a great player. Like he's had the killer year. Uh, and I think like round one really showed like how much our knowledge is like pretty similar. Cause we were, you know, very close there and like we hit almost like everything, you know, the same and missed the same one. So, uh, it just really came down to round two. He, he got an unlucky spin and I was able to pick up steals there and, I honestly had no idea how rom coms was gonna go, but I honestly just I, I just trusted myself with with that category instead of spinning again, and it worked out. Yeah, we we talked for a while before this about what do we do if romantic comedy specifically is the thing that comes up, and we were like, we got to play it by ear, we got to feel it out, and it ended up being the right choice. And yeah, like like Matthew said, Dylan and him were in lockstep in round one, and the wheel truly as everyone has experienced in this game makes you or breaks you and today we got the luckier spin um yeah we are matthew's gonna do what he can next round we'll see what happens and we're we're excited to see it right uh speaking of next round which um i believe uh andrew do you know quite for certain like who he's playing next uh not a clue. I, I think I do, but I don't know if I should say it. Well, we 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 know behind the scenes who we're playing the winner of. Either one will be a very interesting match, and we'll leave it at that. Oh, thank you. I wasn't sure about this. Thank you. Yeah, for, thank, thank you for this one. That is right, but I don't. Yeah, it's it's. That's what I be playing between Jeremy Adams and Antonio Chavez. Who you want more? Um, I mean, I I I, mean, I played Antonio before, so I would love to play you know someone new and uh, Jeremy. I uh, you know he's a legend of the game. I've um, that would be really cool to see happen. All righty then, uh, good job today. See you next time. Thank you guys. And Andrew, another exciting installment in our tournament today. This thing it just. I think this probably this probably maybe our best one yet, yeah, just in terms of how how many turns this has taken and who's still left. But uh, please put a bow on this match for us. Today. Yeah, no. Um, as the player said, uh, it was really tight in round one, and then sometimes, unfortunately, as they said, the wheel just sometimes is a game changer. Um, it was it was good two categories for Dil- uh, for Matthew, and Matthew was able to capitalize. Uh, but don't don't count on Dylan's performance in here. He almost came all the way back in round three, but Matthew just was the better player today, unfortunately. That's right. We'll see him again, and the wheel is going to wheel. With that, we'll say goodbye here today for this episode of Multiplex Movie Melee. Thank our competitors, Matthew Chen, Dylan Vanthine, as our managers today, Cameron Holzman, and everybody here at uh, Multiplex keeps the train of the tracks, brings the content to you guys. But this is Andrew Barr. I'm Mark Machaka. Everybody, please be well. Goodbye. <laughs> Later. I'll be right here. After you, Junior, you'll always have Paris. Bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Take it away.
Bye.